Night Train to Bucharest by Leonard Wells, July 2010. Chapter 2 Legoland. The MI6 building in London is situated on the southern side of the River Thames at Vauxhall. It's a very unusual shape and is known by its employees as Legoland. It's surrounded by two moats and all its windows are triple glazed. You can't get in and the sound can't get out. It was now 7.15 on Christmas Eve 2009. Just over 100 MI6 employees were on duty in this building at this time. One of them was one of the four senior controllers who shared responsibility for the day-to-day -day running of the secret intelligence service round the clock, week in, week out, day in, day out. His name was Mike Carruthers. He was very tall at 1.93 metres. He had a first in Oriental Languages at Oxford. He had been a colonel in the SAS and had become a senior controller here in 1998 at the early age of 51. He was loved by all those who served under him and many a female staff member got goosebumps when he walked into a room. He was just the man needed in an emergency such as this. As soon as he had read the intercepted text message from GCHQ, he called together his Q team, as it was called, which specialised in embassy security and personnel protection. First to arrive in Mike's office was Gladys Brown, his assistant and deputy. She was a 59-year-old spinster who had been a lifelong employee of both intelligence services. She was quite plump and her long grey hair was well controlled by a tight bun at the back. Rumour was that Mike was the only male that she had ever loved. Next came Arthur Lawson, a brilliant man with computers, who had spent time installing all the electronics used at GCHQ in Cheltenham. He was 53 and had seven children. Originally, he'd worked for BT. He was as bald as a coot, but few men could match his IT knowledge. John Jackson, at 49, was next and the youngest, the best-dressed man in the entire intelligence organisation. He had been at one time an MP and had been tipped for high office. Why he was offered a post at his level in MI6 was never disclosed, but there was gossip that he had caught the eye of uh, a minister's wife. Finally, a former Foreign Office Mandarin, Donald Smith, 52, half American, half British, hard-boiled and tough. Mike spoke urgently. OK, now we're all here. We've got quite a flap on tonight, chaps. This is the situation. About ten minutes ago, Z section at GCHQ intercepted a text message to one of our embassy mobiles in Bucharest. According to the listing, the phone was allocated to one Ionel Grigorescu, one of the Romanians employed as a senior gate security man. That message read, and I quote, we have your daughter Manuela. She is safe for now. Instructions will follow in 48 hours. Tell no one, or she dies slowly. OK, so we're not dealing with amateurs. Despite the fact that we switched the mobile numbers around on a regular basis, they managed to call the correct number. This means we can't trust anyone in the embassy, because the number can only have come from one of the staff there. Even the mobile service provider, Orange, could not have been certain who had what number and when. Gladys, who's our man in Bucharest? Mike, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to tell you. We have a problem. We don't have one of ours just now. Our man had a skiing accident in Transylvania two days ago. They broke both legs and an arm. He's currently in a wheelchair in Malta, recovering. We really had to scratch around for a Romanian-speaking replacement but he won't be arriving there before, the Jan before January the 1st. Well, let joy be unconfined and Merry Christmas to one and all, Mike said. How about our, our men in Budapest or Sofia? 
Don't either of them speak Romanian? Gladys shook her head and then her face lit up. Well, it is only a suggestion, uh, Mike, but how about Sticky Bishop? He used to be our top man out there. Gladys, you're a wonder, but wasn't he retired under a cloud of suspicion? That's right, our American friends didn't trust him. He rescued two of their guys who had been kidnapped in Iraq, and they couldn't believe he did it so easily. He claimed to have quoted passages, passages from the Koran, or some such story. Well, where is he now, Gladys, my wonder woman? That's the problem, Mike. The last I heard was that he married a Romanian woman called Christina and was living in some remote northern town. All I can tell you for certain <coughs> is that he banks with Coots and Co. He used to say, if it's good enough for the Queen, it's good enough for me. Arthur, can you hack into Coots and Co.'s client account list? I can, but it'd be a lot quicker if, you, if I have your OK to speak to their duty officer and get their passwords. They change them fortnightly, like we do. You have my OK. Go ahead. If he doesn't play ball instantly, tell him I can get a warrant to break into their bank in no time. Gladys, give me the list of duty government ministers for the holiday period. I'll ring the Foreign Secretary first, as it's an embassy-based problem. I don't care if he's dressed up as Santa Claus. Mike opened his flip phone and began to dial. He tapped the table impatiently, waiting for a reply. Good evening, Foreign Secretary. Sorry to disturb your festivities. Mike Carruthers here, Senior Controller at MI6. Password, Zulu Zulu Charlie 235. The Foreign Secretary replied, Yes, what can I do for you, Carruthers? Flap on in Bucharest, sir. We intercepted, intercepted a text message some 14 minutes ago sent to an embassy mobile allocated to the senior gate security man, a Romanian, warning him that they had kidnapped his daughter. He was to await instructions which were to follow in 48 hours. The foreign secretary began to be agitated. Get our man there straight on to it. Toot sweet and pronto. Well, that's my problem, sir. We don't have a man available at that level who speaks Romanian. Our man there has broken legs and an arm, and he's in a wheelchair in Malta. Good Lord! What then do you suggest we do? Well, Sir Henry, I have in mind to bring out of retirement Richard Bishop. Do you mean Sticky Bishop? Yes, that's the one, sir. Oh, good Lord! He was retired early because there was a cloud over his actions in Iraq, I, I seem to recall. Yes, sir, but if the kidnappers are planning to blow up our embassy or kill the ambassador, needs must. So you know where he is then? No, not just at the moment, sir, but I'll find him. We believe he is in northern Romania somewhere. Can I have your say-so to re reinstate him? I need that authority. Well, I pray God I don't regret it, but go ahead. I'll track down the PM and let him know. What a Christmas present. To be continued soon. Thank you.